Welcome back, viewers. Today, I have a special lady here with us. Her name is Ben Adams. She's an experienced worker within youth health, especially in the area of sexual health, and she's been doing this for over 10 years within the local area here, West Essex. Ben, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, this program particularly, we're looking at sexual health in the broadest perspective, but I know you're more specialist with the youth aspect of it, and some of the things we can actually transpose or use as information for the broader population. But let's look at the, the youth health. In your experience over this period of time, what are the main issues that come out on the picture from youth health and sexual health? Um, I don't think the things have changed that much over the 10 years I've been working with young people. Uh, I think uh, a major factor is pressure. Our young people mm. are under a huge amount of pressure. Yeah. Um, for, you know, from all aspects, from, from peers, from partners, um, and obviously, you know, the wider picture is um, the amount of pressure they're under from the media. From the media. Well, this is a media program, more or less, but and it's trying to convey the right information, the right message. But yes, I understand what you're saying from media. Media has taken a totally different uh, play in our society today. It more or less models the society and gives the idea people should be or what they should be like or how they should act. And I, I'm quite uh, understanding when you mean the pressure they face from the media. But specific specifically, what are the issues in, in sexual health in the youth that you get to see on a more day to day, week to week, month by month basis? Um, I think probably um, the hugest issue is um, contraception choices for our young people. There are, you know, 14 different methods of contraception out there. Mm. Um, but young people don't tend to know, and, and not just young people, people of all ages, don't yeah. tend to know very much about those choices. Mm. So, uh, for example, if a young person goes to the doctor and says, I want to go on the pill, then the doctor will prescribe the pill without exploring, you know, there may be another method of contraception that might be better suited to that person. So it's, um, you know, very difficult, I think, for a young person to have the, the confidence to say, um, well, well, is that want. the best thing for me? Because yes. they know they know about the pill, and it's obviously you know a very good recognised method of contraception. But things like you know the implant, the injections are, um, uh, I would say, a preferred method for young people because pill taking is quite erratic, mm. and so you know forgetting to take them or um, right. you know reasons why it may fail. Um, uh, I think a, a little bit more prominent in in young people. So having something a little bit more. Um, Permanent. Mm. That's not. That's not the right word. Permanent. Um, you know, a long-acting reversible no. contraception is is uh, far more effective. More effective. Say. I mean, from what you've said, I mean, it's pregnancy. It's really the, the the core of the issue. I guess it would be because this is uh, affecting someone else's life, bringing another life into the world, whether it's been a young age or an older age. So having the right information about contraception and pregnancies. I mean, apart from that, are there any other issues, things like STIs? We hear this on the news all the time, sexually transmitted infection. Is th are there other things about that that do come up? Definitely. Uh, chlamydia is a, is a huge one. Um, mm -hmm. We have, you know, uh, the f it's the fastest growing sexually transmitted infection. Um, you know, in the present time, we have uh, between 1 in 10 and 1 in 12 young people that are sexually active have chlamydia. Um, the reason why it's, it's you know, just spreading so much is because 80% of females have no symptoms right. and 50% of males have no symptoms. So of course, you know, people don't go to get checked because if they were having, you know, if they felt ill or they was having, you know, severe symptoms, symptoms they would go and get it looked at. Yes. But because there are no symptoms in most cases, young people just carry on and, mm. you know, if they have unprotected sex and obviously it's getting passed on, it's so easily treated. Um, yeah. You know, the chlamydia, if it's detected, and it's easily detected, um, you know, by a simple urine test or a, um, a swab, depending on the area that you live in. But um, once it's detected, antibiotics will get rid of it really quickly. If you don't know you've got it, then the, the, you know, the effects are devastating yeah, in the long term. In the long term. See, I mean, this is so, some of the things we're looking at on this program, the kind of options, opportunities, and information that people need to stay in better health. And one of this is, is what you just said, a, a disease that is there in the general public where 50% of the males don't have any symptoms. 
and women. I know, I know talking and uh, knowing my medical background, um, there's what you call pelvic inflammatory disease that then shows up oftentimes at the point of pregnancy for a lot of women when they are symptomless from, from chlamydia and that could cause complications at childbirth. Um, I, I know th there's something we and I were talking about prior to coming on air about unwanted and unintended pregnancies. I, I want us to just look at that again and, and explore that. I know it's a term I've, I've embraced from what you've said today, being unwanted and intended. Do you want to just talk a, li a little bit about that? Well, I, I think, you know, nobody intends to, um, unless they're specifically trying for a baby, you know, young people don't intend to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, it's just something that happens because they don't have the correct information in the first place. Yeah. So, you know, if they had all the information about good contraception, and in, in the um, sex education classes that we deliver, you know, we say before you start having sex, get a good method of contraception first. Don't, you know, wait until you know, the issues have started to happen and everything's starting to go wrong, then you've got huge, you know, decisions to make. Whereas if you get the information in the first place and, you know, get a good method of contraception, then those unintended pregnancies can be avoided. We, you know, it's not that... We, d we don't like to sort of say unwanted because yes. that has quite a different connotation to unintended. Yes, yes, because, I you know, growing up with that at the back of the mind that one was unwanted could also have a psychological effect on that child because the child didn't ask to be there it was a consequence of someone else's choice and mm -hmm. I know that's something I've taken away from our discussion earlier but now coming back to, to our, our, our topic on, on sexual health what are the key messages or, or let's, let's take it a step back what barriers do you think they are for people getting this information you've just been sharing with us about contraception, about testing, what, what, what are the barriers you think we have we face today? Um, well, access to services, you know, mm. knowing where the services are, right. and I think very importantly is consistency in services. Yes. So, you know, if there's a service that's available, it needs to be available on a regular basis. Okay. It's not very helpful if we have something. Um, it's available every the third Thursday in every month. That mm. doesn't really compute in young people's that's brains. That's you know, what So yes. if it's there every Wednesday, or it's, you know, if it's there, we have to be realistic, and we know these services are not always, you know, available, available. every day of the week. Mm. Um, would be fantastic if it was. But at least if it's consistent and young people know where to access that service, then you know that would be a huge barrier we could overcome. Um, I think confidentiality is a barrier. Young right. people are very concerned. Um, that who's going to know they've accessed the services, um, you know, not necessarily just parents, but people seeing them seeing going them into the right. service. Um, if it's a, a specific um, sexual health service, you know, will their doctor find out and all I that know, sort of thing. Right. So we, we do work very hard to try and um, reassure our young people that, you know, the service we provide is confidential. Um, we advise um, place at clinics and, and um, doctor surgeries to have confidentiality notices um, you know displayed so that young people mm. can can be reassured that um, they can get information uh, there absolutely yeah. I know you do visits into schools to teach mm -hmm. people in schools as well how, how does that help break this ice or barrier to accessing information um, well for me I think young people can see that you know we are we are human and we are um, not these really um, stuffy old people that are going to judge you when you come along right. to the service um, so we make it sort of you know very sex education fun and friendly and very informative so right. young people will think that okay you know if we go to that service if we're going to see somebody like that person then yes. you know, it put, just put makes it a little bit easier for them to, to access oh that, that's fantastic because that oftentimes is where the error is made when the information is not accessed or where good information is not accessed and then people do things silly and come back with complications or problems. Mm. Yes, I do think that um, you know we have to be very careful where we access our information. Um, the internet is a fantastic thing; it yes. can be, but also there are lots of sites on the internet where you may not get credible information. That's and it. I think sometimes you know wrong information is far worse than no information. No information. Because yes. if you have no information, you may not do anything. But if you've got some information that you think is correct, but it's wrong, then obviously that can be, you know, very damaging. Yeah, I know there's all this question about purchasing medication off on the internet. Mm. Um, and these are some of the things that can be discouraged or emphasized better or directed when people get information from sources like yourselves. Yeah. Um, lastly, 
what would you say if you just want to say a few words to our viewers especially in the youth what would you say to them um, I think know what you want for yourself is really important once you're you're clear in your own mind what you want then obviously you can go out and access access that um, I know it's easy to say you know don't bow down to pressure but I think if we did more in um, education um, raising young people's self-esteem and self-worth I think that you know they would be stronger to be able to um, resist that sort of pressure um, very importantly um, unprotected sex is just a no-no a no -no. so you know effective condom use and um, that's something that we would do in in all of our sex education classes is make sure that young people know where to access condoms know how to use them properly so we have some fantastic schemes in this area where young people can access condoms and um, but before they can do that we have to know that they understand the whole process and how to use them and that sort of thing first so um, and I would also say, also say regular checkups um, accessing chlamydia screening is really easy. Um, there's a, a national chlamydia screening site which is www.chlamydiascreening.nhs.uk um, where you can get a chlamydia test um, sent to you in the post or you can find out where your local clinic is um, if you want to get it online. So there's you know, lots of options for getting a chlamydia test. Um, and also you will find um, access to sexual health clinics, uh, family planning clinics, so find the information, the information is out there and just make sure you do all this research before you embark on a sexual relationship and you'll save yourself a lot of heartache in the long run. Thank you very much. Ben, again, thank you for coming along and I'm sure our viewers will really appreciate the information that you've shared with us and they'll be more enlightened to do with sexual health and especially in the youth. Don't go away, we'll be right back.